All right, here's a product of, here's what I just made um, to show you how to do uh, an invitation, just a simple invitation. Yours don't have to look like that, but I will show you how to make this. The, the purpose of doing four on one page, this is a, an 11 by eight and a half sheet of paper that I've created. Um, the, um, what I did is I created one of these and then I grouped it and I put it on here four times. This makes it so that instead of having like Kinko's or, or uh, FedEx or uh, whoever um, make a whole bunch of small copies. You can just choose to go to any place, choose the paper you want, and just tell them to print on eight, eight and a half by eleven. Say you wanted to have forty of them, just do it on ten sheets of paper, and they'll probably charge you um, between fifty cents to a dollar per page, and that's uh, you know ten bucks, you know five to ten bucks for doing this sort of thing. If you get a really high quality paper, maybe they'll end up charging you, um, you know. A little more than that but that's not too bad so I'm gonna show you how I did this uh, if you'll notice right here I have this small one I, I, I have uh, in Illustrator I've opened up Adobe Illustrator um, if you want to know where Adobe Illustrator is right here and you should have Adobe Illustrator if it doesn't show there then go to click on on your um, on your programs and you'll see Adobe Illustrator in one of these things like there's mine right there so I'm gonna show you how I did something like this. So I'm going to choose this particular, um, uh, let's see, these little windows are, are each a document within one big document um, in Illustrator. So I'm going to uh, zoom in by going control plus and I'm going to hold down the space bar so that hand appears and I'm going to drag over so I'm showing just this right here. And I'm going to put together a um, an invitation now. So notice uh, I'm going to go to what probably your your font is, or let, let's not necessarily call it font, but your typeface. So I'm going to start right here, and I am. Notice I have this. I have I have rulers showing. If rulers aren't showing for you, go to view, and then go to uh, show rulers. Where is it? Rulers, and then show rulers. Mine says hide rulers because I'm showing rulers. Notice I have this document is five inches by four point two five, and the reason why I did that why why I made it uh, five by four point two five is because I made it half I mean one fourth of a sheet of eight and a half by eleven so half of eleven is five and a half sorry I didn't make them half of that I did it with an extra so that each one would have a little point uh, two five margin on it so I made it less than half so I made it eight by ten so it uh, a fourth of eight by ten so four inches by five inches I'm going to start out by creating a text box over here you have tools. We're just going to concentrate on a few tools. You don't have to worry about all these because it gets really confusing. I'm just showing you what you need to know to do this. I'm going to click on the type tool and I am going to click and drag an area to type. And I'm going to put right here, um, Daniela. And don't worry about the typeface at the start. You, we're just going to type it out in a regular font and then we're going to change it later. Uh, graduates on uh, May 26, uh, 2016. We could change that to Daniela Costa announces her graduation on May 26. Let's do that. Uh, actually, I'm just going to leave it like that. You can put whatever words you want. I suggest keeping it simple, but you don't have to keep it simple. And notice how that looks right there. I have uh, kind of a lot of space right there, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change the typeface. I'm going to use this Alexa. I kind of like the script font. I think it looks elegant and it's easy to read. And that's what I require in a typeface. Now, I'm kind of wondering if there's a space in between here. It doesn't look quite right. I'm actually going to increase the size of this because I want it to be bigger. So I'm going to go, I'm going to hold down the control shift key and hit the the right arrow that's on the period key. And notice that it gets bigger and so it's outside of this. So I'm going to just click and drag right here to make it bigger. And then I'm going to go right here and center all that. And I don't like how far apart it is. I, I didn't realize this was going to look like that. So I'm just going to go to this uh, character thing. And there's something called letting. Letting is uh, L-E-A-D-I-N-G. Letting is uh, the space in between lines. And so I'm going to tell it to just do auto letting. No, I'm not going to tell it to do that. I'm just going to read. Oh, wow. 
I'm going to tell it to do it 30. And that looks about right. And if I don't like that, I can go back into the leading and go down a little more so that it kind of... Now I'm going to, once I have that, that's kind of nice. I'm going to create a shape right here. I'm going to use an oval, this ellipse tool. I'm going to create an oval right here. And this is going to house the picture that I'm going to put in it. And the way I'm going to do that, oh, by the way, the way I got that oval to show, I held down on that tool. You notice when I first opened it up, I had a rectangle tool. But if I go and hold that down, these other tools, if you wanted to be a star, you could do it or whatever. But there's an ellipse tool under that, and that's how I got to the ellipse tool. Now I'm going to place a photo on this page. And I have this picture of this kid right here. I'm going to place this image over here. I'm, I'm just going to notice it has that little square in the upper left hand corner. It's not placed it yet. I have to click and drag to finish the placement. So I'm going to place it like that. And now I'm going to use this um, black arrow key to move the picture over so her head is in that oval. And then I'm going to select using the black arrow tool, clicked on the black arrow tool, I'm going to drag, so nothing selected. See, notice I click on the picture, the picture selected. If I click on the oval, the oval selected. But if I click outside it and drag across, it selects both of those. The words aren't selected right here. You can see those little handles that show that it's selected. But I'm going to right click in that, and I'm going to create, choose, make a clipping mask. And it just puts the this graduate's head right in that clipping mask, and it treats it as one object. If I want to move the picture around in there, I can right click on that and choose release clipping mask and then I can move it around but that's actually not the better the, the way to do it I'm gonna do that again I'm gonna make clipping mask I'm, I'm gonna say it to um, isolate the selected clipping mask and then I can move the picture without moving the mask I can move that around I can change the size of the image <coughs> excuse me I can change the size of the image by cl clicking and dragging on the corner I want to hold the shift key as I do it so I don't change the um, aspect ratio of it that's so it doesn't look like uh, it's too big or too small. Actually, I need to make that a little bigger. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag that up a little bit so it fits top to bottom. And that I'm going to go a little bigger. This is a complex part of it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to um, I, um, exit isolation mode. And now it just treats it like it's just that image and I can move that anywhere without moving the picture. Okay, so there's my image in a clipping mask. And now I'm going to add another text box. So I can click on the text tool, type tool is what it's called. And I'm going to click right here and drag. And I'm going to say, um, uh, if say I wanted to say that she thanks everybody. Thanks for your support and love. And notice it went out of the text box. That's okay. So I'm going to click on this uh, black arrow tool again. And I'm just going to drag this down a little bit. And this thanks for your support and love part. I don't think it needs to be as big as the graduation announcement. So I'm going to click right there and just hit a period. And then I'm going to select this by clicking and dragging on it. And instead of 42 point, I'm just going to reduce that down to 24 point. Oh, let me, I missed some of it. So I'm going to do it again. Uh, where's my, there we go, 24 point, boom. And there we go. I'm just going to reduce that size a little bit and put that down here. And I'm going to grab the main announcement right here. Let me bring that up just so it looks nice and balanced. I'm going to add a little background now to it. I'm going to choose this rectangle tool. Actually, I'm going to choose a rounded rectangle tool and go like this over the image. Uh, but don't worry about that. It gave a black inside. I don't want that. So I'm going to go to window and I'm going to go to my libraries because I want to get some graphic styles and I kind of like these scribbles. You don't have to choose those. Um, oh, I just turned them off because they were already there. So I'm going to go graphic style libraries and I'm going to go to scribbles again. And I'm going to throw a scribble on that. And that, I think that's too, um, I think that's too bright and everything, so, but I kind of want it to be see-through. So I'm going to click on this transparency button while that uh, scribbly thing is, is selected. 
click on that transparency button and then I'm going to turn it down so it's only like 40% transparent and that makes it so it's not so pronounced oops it makes it so it's not so pronounced there we go and I use that same thing right here and do it behind the graduation announcement again I'm going to use the scribble which scribble did I use was it this one and I'm going to reduce the opacity of that that's the see-throughiness of it take it down 40% just like I did the other one and that's a really really simple announcement but we're not done yet I'm going to come back over here I'm going to hold down the the space bar to drag across like this and I'm going to go control zero so I have uh, let me do that again I'm going to come over here and click into this and then you'll control zero so I have full view of this. Now notice I kind of did the same thing as before. This is a little different. But I want to take this stuff and copy and paste it over here four times. So I'm going to get rid of this, what I had before, so you can see how I did this. So that's all gone. Now I'm going to take the, these items right here, select them. I'm going to go control G to make them all one group. So now when I click on that, it all acts as one group. I'm going to drag this over here. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag this. And while I'm dragging, I'm going to hit the Shift key so it keeps it right in line. I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to try to make it so I have about the same amount of margin on each side. I'm going to shift. I'm going to click on that. This is all with the black arrow tool. I'm going to shift on this. Shift click on those. So those are all selected. I'm going to hold down the Alt key. And I'm going to start dragging. And then I'm going to hold down the Shift key to drag it straight down so it doesn't move left and right. And I'm going to try to make it so it has about the same amount of margins on the top and bottom. And there we go. And now if I print this, I'm going to have four of these. And you can cut it right down the middle. You can cut it right at five and a half. You can cut it right at four and a quarter. So you have pretty much the exact same amount of margins on all of them. And you can throw those in envelopes and get them out there. Uh, you should save this. Last step. You should save this as a PDF. I'm going to go to export. And I want to save it as a PDF. So I'm going to click on that. And where's my PDF? Actually, I can't do it that way. Let me go a different path. So I go File, and I say um, Save As. And this one I can save as a PDF. So, And I'm going to save it in my, um, I'll just go to my desktop. If you have a flash drive or something, I would recommend saving it there. It says grad, grad announcement. I'm going to call that grad announcement 2016. And click save. It's going to give ask me for something in a second. Illustrator default. That sounds good. We'll keep it on that. Save as PDF. And you'll notice now, after this minimizes, it has to save it. It takes a second. And you'll notice how the, the grad announcement's right here on my desktop where I saved it. If I double click on it, it opens it up in Adobe Reader. And it did it two pages. Notice the first page is, is the um, the first page is the, the blank thing where I dragged stuff from. Gosh. And the second page is this. And you could take that into any you can take that into any um, you know place that prints stuff like this. You could print it on photo paper. You could print it on cardstock. You could print it on something that has a texture that you like. And then every for every page that you print on an eight and a half by eleven, it'll give you four invitations. And then you can usually cut it in one of those shops yourself. They usually have cutters or somebody will cut it for you, and they'll do it pretty perfectly. Um, that's about it. Uh, by the way, you don't have to use this design. You can use any of the design elements that you want. This is not my best work, but it lets you know what's happening. That's all I got for you.